Good day, my name is Barry van Kampen, Technologist Security with NITQ, and today we're going to talk about a very important subject. It's about CSAM, and it might be an uncomfortable subject for somebody who is watching over there, um, but it's a very important uh, subject. CSAM is child sexual abuse material, and we as an ITQ, we think it's very important to bring it to a subject we can protect against. And with me, I got Johan, and Johan is of NetClean. Johan, could you explain what NetClean is doing? NetClean is protecting the world against CSAM. And uh, you know, our mission is to get it everywhere on every single laptop and desktop in the world. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit how uh, NetClean is doing that? Of course, um, it all starts with the CSAM, yeah? So an image or a movie is created somewhere in the world. And hopefully, and eventually, the authorities will capture or seize that material. And they will code it with a unique fingerprint or a hash signature that they share with NetClean. We do incorporate that hash into our technology into uh, a desktop agent when and it works like an antivirus so when these unique hashes comes up with the image that they're watching it corresponds to this hash and we get an alert so if i'm correctly yeah. um, the hashes who are being caught by police authorities and yes. law enforcement they're going to be put in a database of netclean yes and this is your solution. So this is NetClean from your company side. And if I'm understood it correctly, the customer side, for example, has a laptop where images of CSAM are being consumed. Hopefully not, but yes. And your technology has the possibility to check the hash of this system comparing to your database. Correct. Does it work directly like that? The database is actually uh, local. And it's not going to be brought ever to the net clean environment in that way. Never, never. This is, you know, the, the client ha has their own environment and they look at their own information and never share it with us unless they want to. We never ask for it and we don't see anything. Okay, so I can understand there is a server running. Yes. A control server and the database information of NetClean is being sent to this server. Yes. And in that way, a comparison at the customer side will be made with the images on the laptops or computers of systems of the customer. Correct. And once they get the new stuff, uh, it feeds back into that and back into the agents. Okay. Uh, what happens uh, if there is a, a positive hash being detected? So usually uh, it doesn't occur. But what happens if it does occur? Then it's a, an alert or an a, a incident or an alarm will be sent to the designated person within that corporation to, you know, validate and, you know, handle. Okay. And um, this alert, what does it contain? Is it a report? Yes, it's a report that tells you about, you know, the, the device uh, that is actually consuming the material. So it's uh, the MAC address, the, the IP at the time and that can translate into a person once you look into the detail. Okay, um, for forensic purposes, uh, device information is very important, of course, to do uh, forensics and incident response in it. Um, can it bring more information than the device and the IP and the Mac? Absolutely, you can, you can connect this to, to other security solutions, uh, such as Carbon Black. Okay. So, and you can get more information out of the incident to be able to make better informed decisions about the incident. So the carbon black information can be used in the report, and in this way, the report can be handled by the organization. Yes. Um, what usually is the next step when a report is being made? So it depends on the company policy, but usually uh, what happens is the company looks at it in different ways. Uh, it really depends on the organization. But what usually happens once they find it is they bring in the, uh, the authorities or police, whatever, uh, and uh, the, the person, uh, the, the perpetrator, if you want, is going to have people coming to his home to look at other stuff, most likely. And usually, uh, not usually, but it happens that when we do this, 
And what, what we see is they can actually find more material, maybe even new material that is not you now already tagged or hashtagged, if you want. And then, you know, we can brand more images to feed this database with new material. So if I understand it correctly, the system which is compromised with the material, yeah. they can seize it or they can bring it to the investigation yes. and uh, find more material and data, for example. Maybe not there, but in other external devices, USB sticks at home, um, other produced materials, yes. Okay, and if I'm correctly, a hash could be brought back to law enforcement, for example, and enrich the database, but it's just a possibility. Yes, so the material will be brought there and that will create the hash. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And then we start all over again yes. and enrich the database. Yeah. Um, another important detail you just mentioned is it's not only about the laptop, because uh, USB sticks are also being tested in hard drives, for example? Yeah, so it, it, as long as it's being cached with the, with the device, uh, we detect it. That's also good, because it makes the chance on detecting the material yes. quite large. Yes. So that's good. Well, it definitely looks like a solution, uh, which is very interesting to bring this, um, this, this, this material down and detect the perpetrators on it and take action uh, on it. Um, I think this is very interesting to, do, uh, to take a look on and uh, to make it at least a better world uh, in that way. Yes. I know I still remember Netlean also has a very nice slogan on that. Yes, you know, uh, protect what matters. If you want to know how you can protect what matters, please give me a ping and Yo and I will be probably, we love you to answer, to give answers to your question uh, about this subject. If you've got other questions about it, just give me a ping and let me know. Thank you for watching.